Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to create a very simple and beginner friendly tutorial. This tutorial is for a PDF text extractor. So here we're going to use tkinter to create this graphical user interface or this desktop application. Then we're actually going to use the app to open a PDF file and extract the text from it. So let me demo this for you real quick. If I press on open PDF file, this will open up this file dialog. I can select a PDF file and it will just get the text from the file and add it to my text widget in tkinter. So this is pretty straightforward. We're going to use two main things, tkinter to create the interface and another library called PI PDF 2 and then we're actually going to build this app. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Now I am using VS Code to write the code. However, you can use any Python text editor that you like, so long as you're able to run Python and you are comfortable with it. Make sure that you have tkinter and you're actually able to create tkinter applications. If you need a video on how to install it, if you don't have it, I have a short video on my channel. You can refer to it. All right, so I have some starter code in front of me. I'm going to walk you through it and we're going to see how this code really works. So first off, what I'm doing is I'm importing tkinter. And by the way, source code is in the description as always. So if you need to refer to the full source code, you can check the link in the description. So first things first, I import tkinter. Then I'm going to import something called file dialog. You'll see why we need that later on. So let's just ignore the imports for now and see what the starter code looks like. I have my root, which is a tkinter.tk object. This is how you create your root widget in tkinter. So this is the parent widget that will contain everything else. So think of it like a giant container and inside of it, I'm going to put my label, my button, my text widget. This is where all the different widgets from the application will exist within this root widget. Next, I will set the title to my window and I'll show you how this looks like when I run it. And finally, I will create a label right here. So let me actually just clear this code for now and I'll go through it later on because I want you to focus on the very basics. And next, I'm going to execute root.main loop. So I'm executing this. This will create an infinite loop in my application. This is how tkinter actually executes the applications. It creates an infinite loop and so long as this loop is running, the application will be uh, running on your machine and it will be listening for events. That's not really the purpose of this video. So just think of it as an infinite loop. Let's run this starter code and see what it gives us. As you can see, it creates this empty application window. So if I drag this here, you can see that the title, if I resize it, says PDF text extractor. So this is when I set root.title, this is where this title went. It's obviously blank and it continues to exist and to execute so long as this main loop is running. All right, so I had two lines of code that you saw me erase. There they are. What is this supposed to do? The first thing I want to do is I want to create a label widget inside my application. Let me run it and show you how this should look like. As you can see, it says no file selected. Labels are essentially a type of plain text that is displayed inside your application. There are plenty of labels in all the applications that you use on a daily basis. This is basically the text that just exists there and it tells you what's going on in the application. It's not a button that you click. It's not text that you can edit, not directly at least. It's just a label. So this is the label here and it says no file selected. So how did I create this label? Here I'm assuming you are a total beginner and I'm going to walk you through this step by step. So you use the tkinter class that we imported before and you create a label object. So you say tkinter.label. Next, you specify the parent of this label object. The parent means where does this label exist? So where is it contained? You know how we said the root widget is like a giant container where everything else is inside of it. So here we say root is the parent of label. So label is another box inside the large container, which is root. Next, what I specify is the text. So the text itself will be no file selected. And this is what you saw when we ran it. And the text itself said no file selected. So this entire label object, we saved it inside a variable called file name label. Now you see this line of code right here, file name label dot pack. And you might ask me, what does that even mean? So in tkinter, 
There's a very simple principle that you should always know and always think of whenever you're developing an interface using tkinter. You can't just create an instance of a certain widget. You also need to position it on the screen. So there's always two steps. Create the widget, such as here, then position it on the screen. There are three different types of geometry managers in tkinter, so pack, place, and grid. Have a separate video discussing those in depth. But basically, pack is the most straightforward one in which it will just center your label or button or whatever widget on your screen and just pack everything together. It takes up as much space as the widget needs and it keeps it centered and makes the interface responsive. This is what we want. This is the simplest form of the geometry managers. So without this dot pack here, if I just erase it and I try to run the application, you can see we get the blank screen again, so it doesn't exist on the screen. Adding this using a geometry manager is definitely mandatory. You need to add this step, you need to add it to your screen, otherwise it won't appear on your screen. So you can see right now it appears here, it's also responsive, it stays centered. This is how it looks like. All right. We added the label. As you saw at the start of the video, we have two other things, a button that's going to open up the file dialog and a text widget where we're going to put all the text that we just extracted from the PDF. So let's add those. As you can see, it's pretty similar to what we did with tkinter.label. This time we say tkinter.text. This is the text widget. This is where we will add the text. The parent is root. So again, the label, the button, the text, they're all widgets inside this larger container, which is the root. We save this in a variable. Next, what we do is we say tkinter.button. So this is the third widget that we're using, which is a button. And the parent, of course, is root as well. So we save these two in variables. Now the button also has a text option. This is just me specifying what is the text that will be written on the button. Of course, like I said before, simply adding them in the code without positioning will not add them to the application, as you can see right now. So to add them to the app, I also have to pack them. So you can see dot pack and then dot pack again. By doing so, now we have our full interface. So as you can see, we have the label that says no file selected. We have the text widget. So this is where I can just type random things. And we have the button. For now, I can click on the button, but nothing happens because we haven't programmed it to do anything. But essentially, this is our button. And of course, it says open PDF file similar to what we wrote. So this is what we wrote. And this will be translated here. So this text option just tells me what to write on the button. OK. We have created the interface. What we want to do next is to actually open up this file dialog so we can start by opening the file. Let's see how we're going to do so. So with buttons with tkinter, what you really want to know is the command option. So command basically is telling tkinter when this button is clicked, when I click the button, when this event occurs, which is me clicking the button, Go to this command, execute this function, which is called open file. Obviously, you can see it says it's an error because open file doesn't exist yet. So let's create it. We define a Python function called open file. And this is how this is going to work. So when command, when the button is clicked, execute whatever is inside command. In this case, this is open file, which will take us here. This is how you link a tkinter button with a function that should be executed when this button is clicked. All right, so now we are linking the button with the function. What we want to do next is actually write the contents of the function so that we actually open up the PDF file. To do so, we're going to utilize the tkinter file dialog, which is this guy that I imported right here. This is one of the few modules in tkinter that you have to explicitly import like so. So you need to say from tkinter import file dialog. You can't just rely on this import tkinter. Okay. So now that we've imported it, I will simply add these three lines of code and let me walk you through it step by step. So let me actually erase the inputs of this function. Let's actually talk about the function name. So here inside a variable, which is file name. So this will store the name of the file that we will open. I say file dialog dot ask open file name. What this means is you will get me the name of the file that I just opened. So when I open up a file dialog and you select a file here, I'm going to save the name of it inside this variable file name. So what were the parameters that I just specified? 
basically I said what the title is. So by title, I gave the title to the file dialog. You'll see what it is in a second. Let's not think about that too much right now. Initial directory is basically where this file dialog will open. So will it open on my desktop in my documents folder or in this specific folder right here, which is the one that I added explicitly. In your case, of course, you should write your own directory and not my directory. Finally, we have the file types. And let's actually clear this one for now and clear this part and let's try it without. Okay, let's run it. And of course, this is our interface. So we said when I click on the button, this should take me to the open file function. As you can see, it opened up a file dialog, which is the one that you're used to seeing anytime you use Windows or anything. Anytime you tr try to upload something to the Internet, this is what you usually see. This is what we call a file dialog. Okay, so open PDF file is the title. This is the title that we specified right here. So this is the title parameter. So now you know where this goes. And the initial directory is where this file dialog will be opened. And this is exactly where it opened. So it opened up in this directory. It didn't open on any other place on my machine. It opened up in this specific directory. As you can see, I can access all three of my different files. I have main.py and the two different PDFs which already exist inside my project. But let's say I want to filter out this Python file. I only want PDF files. So this should not be there. I shouldn't be able to see it. So here's how we will fix it. Let's stop running. We add this file types parameter. So file types, I give it a Python list. It will be a list of tuples. And I say, I want PDF files and their format is any name.pdf. So this will only show me file, uh, files that end with .pdf. Let's run it again and try to open up the file dialog. This time you don't see main.py. You only see PDF files in the option right here, and you only have the option to open up a PDF file. So by doing so, we filtered out any, any different file that is not a PDF. So now we are sticking to just getting PDF files. So let's say I click on my file and I press open. Obviously nothing happens. We haven't gone that far yet in our code. So let's go back to the code. We said that we're saving the file name inside this file name variable. Let's try to print this file name variable out. Let me open up my output console and just make it bigger. Let's rerun the application and let's open PDF file. Let's press on my file and press open. And if we scroll down here, you can see that the entire name of my file was printed out here. So the directory as well as the name myfile.pdf. So now you know that inside this file name variable, we saved the file name. So let's review the steps we finished. We finished creating the interface. Then we added this open file dialog part of the interface and we were able to get the file name of the PDF that we opened. The very last step is to actually read the text from this PDF. To do so, we're actually going to use a popular Python library, which is PyPDF2. So you're going to go to your terminal. Now I'm using the integrated terminal with VS Code, or you can use your CMD. This is totally up to you. And you're going to pip install PyPDF2. So in my case, it says requirement already satisfied because I have already installed it. In your case, if you've never used it before, of course, it's going to take about a minute to load and install on your machine. Once that's done, you should be ready to go. So I've installed it. Let's close the terminal. Now I can start working with it. First things first, I need to import it. So as you can see, I added here to my import. So I imported PyPDF2. Next, I create a reader object. So this PDF reader object, so this class is what will enable me to read from this file. So I say pypdf2.pdf reader. To this class, you need to pass the name of the file which you want to read. So here I could have said myfile.pdf, but in my case, I say file name because here I'm taking the file name that I got from tkinter's file dialog and I'm inserting it here to my PDF reader so that it can read from this file. So this is what we want in the ideal case. We want to read from this file. We save this reader object inside a variable called reader. Now, how do we extract the text? We create a loop. 
because while it is simple to extract from a single page PDF, it's a bit more complicated for multi-page PDF. So here I have two PDFs, let me show you. So I have my file.pdf, it's a very short like dummy text here, it's pretty plain. And the other one is multiple pages.pdf, it's also dummy text. And as you can see, it's five pages long. So I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. So when we have multiple pages, we can get the number of pages using this reader.num pages. So in the case of the second file, this should return five. So now that I have this, I loop over it. So for I in range number of pages, what I want to do is I will get the reader.getPageI. So this will enable me to get page zero, get page one, get page two, get page three, get page four, so on. So this is what will get all the pages from my PDF file. And I will run a very simple function called extract text. Let's try to just print this current text. So let's print current text. So now we are extracting the text using these few lines of code using this PyPDF2 reader. So let's stop, rerun the application, and let's open up the my file PDF. So here, as you can see, it first printed out the file name. Then what it did is it started by printing out all the information from the PDF. So this is the same text that you see in the PDF. So if we go back here, this is the same text. And so we were able to actually extract this text from the PDF and print it out to our output. So the very, very final step is we actually want to add it to our text widget in Tkinter. So this is also pretty simple. So rather than printing it out, what I'm going to do is I will simply run this line of code. I'll say output file text. This is the name of our text widget dot insert. So insert will add the new text. I say tkinter.end, this means it will insert it at the very end of the widget. I'll explain this part later on. And current text. So I want to insert my current text into this text widget. So let's try it again. Let's open PDF file, let's open my file. And as you can see, the text from that widget was inserted right here. So it was inserted into the text widget of my tkinter app. Now with the multiple page, so if I open PDF file, I can get multiple pages. And as you can see, the text was also added here. Now, of course, there is the issue that the text from the original file was still here. How do we clear this? Let's actually go back to the code. So before I want to do any insertions, I want to first clear the output file text. So I just say dot delete. And then here I say 1.0. Basically, I'm saying from the start, to the tkinter dot end. So by doing so, I should clear it every time I open up a new file. So let's actually run it. Let's open up the first one. So you can see this is the short file. And then I have the multiple pages file and it overwrites the existing text. So now we were able to extract everything and overwrite the existing text. So let's sum it up. In this app, what we did, we created the interface, we opened up a file dialog, we got a PDF file, we got the name of the PDF file, then we read from it using PyPDF2, and we added the text to the text widget. The very last thing I want to do, and this is just for aesthetic reasons, is this label where it says no file selected, I want to change it to the name of the file that we selected. So to do so, very simple as well. So here we already have the file name anyways so we just say uh, let me check the name of the label so file name underscore late file name underscore label dot configure and then here what we need to do is when we configure we have to say specify the text as the text that we want so let's just say text equals file name so this is the text that we want this is the new text for this label Let's rerun it and open up a PDF file. Let's try with my file. You can see the name of the file here was added to this label. So now I can see which file I have open. Now I can open another one. You have the multiple pages one and you can see the name also changed as well. So that's really it for this video. In this video, we were able to use both Tkinter and PyPDF to create this very simple and beginner friendly project. I hope you found it useful. Do let me know of any questions in the comment down below and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.